Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's solve another problem today, longest increasing subsequence. And this is another tricky dynamic programming problem. And I'm gonna show you how to go from the recursive solution to the dynamic programming solution. So we're given an array of numbers and we just wanna return the length of the longest increasing subsequence. And if you don't know what a subsequence is, it's basically like, let's say this is our input array. We're basically taking a subarray, but that subarray does not have to be contiguous. So like we have from here, so uh, subsequence is three, six, two, seven. Basically we took this subarray and we removed one, two from it and we removed a one from it. And now it's three, six, two, seven. But you notice about this subsequence, it's not an increasing order, right? We have six and then we have two, that's not increasing order. So this is not a increasing subsequence. So in this example, we're given about nine elements and we want the longest increasing subsequence, which we see is this. And so how did we get that subsequence? Well, you go from two all the way to 101, but you notice that unfortunately, this is not an increasing order. We have a five and then we get a three right after. So we actually have two choices. If we remove the three, we have an increasing subsequence. If we remove the five, we also have an increasing subsequence. But we just care about the length, which in this case is four, so we return four. So the first idea you might have is brute force using depth first search. So let's say that this is our input array. So we have six elements. For If we wanna know the brute force, meaning we wanna generate every possible subsequence, we have a choice for each value, right? So for the first zero, we have a choice. Are we gonna include this zero in our subsequence or are we not going to include it in our subsequence? So in reality, for each value, we have two choices. Now, when we get to the next value, we also have a choice. Are we including it or not? So again, we have two choices if we wanna generate every possible subsequence. So we do that for every single value. And then we see that there are actually two to the power of n possible subsequences where n is the number of values given in our input array. So already you can see the time complexity is not gonna be great, but can we take this brute force approach and then somehow modify it to get a better solution like n squared? So let's look at another example. And this time we're gonna do depth versus search with caching. And we're gonna see how that improves our time complexity. So we have an example of four elements. So it's kind of obvious that this is our longest increasing subsequence. So the result is gonna be three, three elements. But how can we do this with an algorithm that's efficient? Well, let's start out with the brute force approach. Let's check all subsequences starting at index zero and then repeat that starting at index one, starting at index two and starting at index three, right? So these are the indices. So we take one decision to start at index zero. We take one decision to start at index one, one decision to start at index two, and one decision to start at index three. So in these cases, these are gonna be the uh, subsequences we have so far. So we know index zero has value one, index one has value two, index two has value four, index three has value three. So now let's go along the first path, so index zero. So we know if we start at index zero, we have three values that come after it. So we can try all three of these possible decisions. So we can go along index one, index two, and index three. And we see that all three are possibly valid because all three of these values are greater than one. So we can continue these subsequences. So we know index one has value two, Index two has value four, so we can add a four. Index three has value three, so we can add a three to our subsequence that originally was just one. So now we took index zero and index one. So for here, we only have two indices that come after 
these two values, so let's continue our decisions. We see that both 4 and 3 are greater than the, the last value in our subsequence, which is 2, so we can choose both of these decisions. So if we take index 2, then we can add a 4 to our subsequence. If we take index 3, we can add a 3 to our subsequence. So now let's continue here. We have three values so far in our subsequence, and there's one index that comes after two, index three. It has a value three. So can we add a three to our subsequence? We'll get one, two, four, and then three, but this three three is not greater than the last value in our subsequence, so we technically cannot make this decision, so we cannot continue to increase this subsequence anymore. So we can mark this as reaching its limit. We cannot continue it anymore. What about this one? Well, it stopped at index three, which was over here. So are there any elements that come after it now? No, there's not any elements. So this subsequence has also reached its limit. So we cannot increase it anymore. But so now let's focus on this caching part. What kind of repeated work have we eliminated? Well, let's just do this out of order. Instead of doing these first, let me show you what happens if we try to extend the three now. We try to get another element, right? We started at index three, but we know that no values come after index three. So this one cannot be continued. But what do we know about index three? If we start at index three and we want the longest increasing subsequence, we just get a single three. So that tells us that LIS starting at index three is one. We don't need to repeat this work. And isn't that what we just learned over here? Even though this subsequence is length three, we are talking about starting at the three and we noticed we could add a three to it, right? This was the element that we added, but as soon as we added that three, we could not add, we could not increase this subsequence anymore, right? That's what this X tells us. We were only able to add one element if we start at index three. And that's exactly what this two told us as well. If we start at index two, we can add a four, but this three that comes after it cannot be added. We cannot include that, and there aren't any more elements to add. So as soon as we finished this and we found this X, meaning we could not go any lower, we knew, we knew that the longest increasing subsequence starting at index two is also one. So therefore, if we start at index two, we cannot go any lower. We cannot continue this. And we don't even have to attempt to do that. And what about this branch? So if we chose, if we started at index one, we would start with the subsequence of two, right? That's what this tells us. And so now I'm gonna repeat, I'm gonna do some more stuff, right? I'm gonna choose the next indices, two and three, but wait a minute, do I actually have to do that? Because look over here, we started with index one and we already did that. So when we started with index one, we saw we had two choices, a two or a three index, right? We could choose this or we could choose that. We saw both of them ended, right? We could not continue either of them. So if you want the longest increasing subsequence that starts at index one over here, no matter what you choose, the subsequence is going to be length two either way, right? Because if we start with a two, then we can add a four or we can add a three, but we cannot add both of them. So we can mark the longest increasing subsequence starting at index one to be length Two. So we actually don't even have to go down this path once we already go down here because it's just going to be repeated work. 
And we also see for these two trees that we have not finished yet, once we add a four, the longest increasing subsequence at index two, which is where four is at, is going to be one. So we cannot continue this anymore. Similarly, once we add a three, we know no values come after it. The longest increasing subsequence starting at index three is just one. We cannot increase this anymore. So when we finally in our depth first search get back to the root, we're going to see that the longest path is one of these, right? Either that or of course you could go down this direction, but either way, the longest increasing subsequence starting at index zero is going to be three. And so when you look at these four, right? Because these are our subsequences. These are the longest subsequences starting at each index. The greatest one is three. And so therefore the result is three. But now if you actually want to do the dynamic programming solution, you might notice how we're doing this recursively. We're kind of starting at the last index, right? Three, and then working our way up backwards to zero. So then going back here. So can we use that to do dynamic programming? So now let me show you the dynamic programming solution and it's actually easier than you might think. So we're going to work, we're going to start at the last index three and then work our way backward. So we know this is kind of the base case, right? No values come after it. So the longest increasing subsequence we can make from here is just going to be length one anyway. So we can say the LIS starting at index three is just one. That's the max length. Now, how do we get the longest increasing subsequence starting at index two, which is just one shifted to the left? Well, one possibility is just four by itself, right? So that's one possibility. It could just be one or it could be one plus the longest increasing subsequence starting at position three and what this means is if we take both of these, right? Because LIS of three is just one, right? So three by itself, but we're only allowed to do this if the value nums at index two, which we know is four, is less than nums at index three, which we know is three. Is this true? This is not true. So we are not allowed to do this. So normally we would take the max of these two values, but we know that the condition to take the max of this does not satisfy. So we only have one choice, one. So the LIS of this is going to be one. I'll put it over here, like in the corner. So again, we're going to work our way backwards. So let's get the longest increasing subsequence one index back at index one. So we're going to do the similar thing that we just did. So we know we could take a subsequence two by itself, right? That's one choice. One is a choice, length one. We also have a choice, one plus the longest increasing subsequence starting at four. And we're allowed to do this because two is less than four. So it is increasing. The subsequence is increasing. So another choice is one plus LIS of two. And another choice is LIS starting at index three because two is less than three, right? Two is less than three. So the subsequence is an increasing order. So one plus LIS of three. Now we know that this is two and this is two. So it doesn't really matter which one we do. The LIS of one is going to be equal to two regardless. So now we want the longest increasing subsequence starting at index zero. And we're just going to repeat what we just did. So we could take one by itself, which is just one, or we could take one, add it with the longest increasing subsequence starting at two, or this longest increasing subsequence starting at, uh, at this index or this index. So we know we're going to get one plus one from here. We're going to get one plus one from here. And we're going to get one plus two from here. And we're allowed to do all of these because you notice two is greater than one, four is greater than one, and three is greater than one. So they're an increase. So they are in increasing order. So then we know that the longest increasing subsequence of this is going to be equal to 
three, which is what we want. So this is a much better solution. The dynamic programming solution is much better than brute force because the time complexity is O of n squared. But why is it O of n squared? Well, you see we're working backwards. We start at three and then we check every position afterwards, which is not too bad, right? So then we iterate through basically every value here. When we start at four, we have to look at every value that comes after it. There's only one value that's good for us. So we iterate through these two values. When we start at two, we have to check these subsequences starting at these two values. So then we have to end up iterating through two and every value that comes after. And we do the same thing for one. So we iterate through one and every value that comes after. So you can tell by looking at this, this pattern is similar to an n squared pattern. So now let's finally write the code. So we know we're going to do this dynamic programming style. So let's have a cache or a list. It's initially going to be set to one. Every value is going to be set to one. It's going to be the length of the input array that we're given. So every longest increasing subsequence starting at every value or every index is initially just set to one. We're going to try to find what the max is. So we want to iterate through every index in the range of our input array and we want to do it in reverse order. So that's what I'm going to do in Python. It, if you're not familiar with Python, this might look a little weird, but basically what I'm doing is starting at the last index and then going all the way to zero. And just like I showed in the example, we're going to start at index i, like this could be i, and then we want to iterate through every subsequence that came after it. So I'm going to have another nested loop for j in range. So starting at i plus one and then going to the end of the input array. And before we can update LIS, we want to know is the value at i actually less than the value at j because j comes after it. If we want this to be an increasing subsequence, this condition has to be true. And only then are we allowed to update the longest increasing subsequence at index i. And we can set it to the max of itself and or the max of one plus the LIS starting at J because we know for sure J is going to be an increasing order with I. And literally that is it. We made sure to evaluate that it's an increasing order. We did it backwards. We made sure to cache the repeated work. What do we have left to do? Well, we want to return what the max is. How can we do that? Well, in Python, you can just take the max of a list. So whatever uh, the long, whatever the greatest value is in here is going to be returned. And they're actually, so this is O of n squared, and there actually is a better solution, big O of n log n, but I really doubt your interviewer is going to expect you to get this on your own without a hint. If they do, I would personally just walk out of the room. But I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.